<laughs> not me. Uh, next up are candidates for 11, or, um, 35th State Senate District. So if Senator Dave Severson and Senator Christine Johnson could please join us. Appreciate it. All right. Senators, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Absolutely. We are going to start with opening statements. If Senator Severson, if you would like to give yours. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for uh, putting on this uh, a forum, giving us an opportunity to uh, introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about the issues that, uh, uh, that are important to uh, all of us. Uh, just a quick uh, background, as was mentioned, uh, redistricting has changed uh, the areas. Uh, previous to this last redistricting, I had the opportunity of representing uh, Northern DeKalb and Boone County and parts of Winnebago County. And now under the, the new map, uh, I am coming back home and uh, representing uh, uh, Northern DeKalb and a little bit further of that, as well as uh, parts of Western uh, Kane. Uh, it's tough to cover a lot of issues in a very short period of time, but let me just say I, I come from a uh, business background, and as a business background, um, it's pretty clear uh, that you can see that Illinois is facing some uh, systemic uh, problems, uh, problems that have been compounded uh, over uh, the fact that for years our leaders were will unwilling to address uh, the major uh, issues that they were facing, whether it was about Medicaid, uh, pensions, health care, uh, education, uh, the jobs climate. Uh, their failure to address those issues uh, only made the situation more difficult in Illinois. Uh, the good news is that these problems aren't unsurmountable. We have the ability to uh, turn this around. We've seen what other states have done. Uh, my commitment is that working with uh, both sides, uh, dealing with the, uh, the core problems in Illinois, we can put Illinois back to work and we can address uh, those core issues uh, that uh, Illinois is facing. Uh, and it looks like time's almost out. Uh, you can always go to my website. There's more information about where I stand uh, on issues uh, and I look forward to answering uh, your questions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Severson. Senator Johnson. Good evening and I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this event tonight. It's really my pleasure to be here. I just got back from Springfield to be with you. As you may remember, I was appointed to fill out last year unanimously by the Republican County Chairman to fill out the term left by retired Senator Bradley Brzezinski. And it's really been my privilege and honor to serve this 35th district and the citizens of this district. And I'd like to continue. The new 35th district is 75% of my old 35th. And um, prior, of course, to this, most of you know that I served as a DeKalb County Treasurer for 17 years, being elected five times in DeKalb County. Many of you know that I graduated from Northern Illinois University, go Huskies. And, um, and one little fun fact I'd like to share with you is I'm the only graduate of NIU to ever represent NIU's main campus in the Illinois Senate. So that's a fact I'm very proud of. I've been married to Jim for 28 years, and we have one grown son. People ask me why I want this job. And it's, I tell them it's because I have a heart for public service. I believe that people want and need someone in Springfield who can represent their values. I believe in smaller, smarter government, and the state government has grown far beyond its, its, uh, what it should be. I believe in families, and I will fight for them in Springfield. I'm pro-life, pro-family senator who believes that marriage is a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I also believe that parents should have the ability to decide how and where their children are educated. I believe the Constitution must be upheld, and I'm a strong supporter of your Second Amendment rights. The welfare of our, our families is also the reason I'm opposed to the expansion of gambling in Illinois. Gambling is not a reliable source of revenue, and it leads to addictions and a variety of social ills. And speaking of spending, as the treasurer of DeKalb County, we always had a balanced budget, paid our bills on time, and had money to invest at the end of every day. I'm horrified by the sea of red ink in our state, and I'm, as you are as well. I think that we need to balance our budget, and I, we, like our citizens do, and um, we need to lead by example. Okay. Thank you. Not surprisingly, many of the questions submitted for you guys have to do with the state budget. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the first question will go to Senator Severson. Medicaid costs are exploding. What can be done to contain the costs? Medicaid is a, um, the largest portion of our state's budget, which is the health care program that deals with uh, uh, low income uh, individuals. Uh, again, the solutions are, uh, are that um, are simple uh, if you're willing to make those uh, right decisions. The idea that the uh, governor is talking about with just taking a, a large hatchet approach is not the way to do it. Uh, that system needs to be, uh, the areas that we address it are, uh, number one, we deal with making sure that only those who qualify for the program uh, are in the program. Uh, second, uh, we uh, institute a plan of, of managed care, especially dealing with the AABD population as a way to uh, lower those uh, costs. Uh, third, uh, we look at instituting plans that will uh, help uh, manage uh, uh, individuals in, in the way of paying co-pays uh, for uh, families that are involved in the, uh, the program. Uh, and then uh, fourth, we institute a, a program of wellness benefits. Uh, if we can keep individuals healthy, uh, they're not going to be utilizing the, the system. So those are all things that can be done that other states have done. If we do that, we can bring that spending under control. Okay. Thank you. Senator Johnson, same question. Well, I think, it, as uh, Senator Severson said, Medicaid is a huge part of our budget. Over the past 10 years, Medicaid uh, enrollees has gone up 75 percent. It's an extraordinary expense for our state, and it's uh, only growing, and it's uh, looking to be up to $21 billion in a, just a very short time. I think there are a number of things that can be done to get our Medicaid spending under control. First of all, we need to instate a re Medicaid recapture audit where we look and see at every, uh, sit every person who's on Medicaid if they are eligible. They will look at their income and their other eligibility um, statistics and make sure that they are actually eligible. The other thing that we can do is to um, do a, a, a reduction in our services. Illinois has some very generous uh, benefits, and if we just reduce them to the state, the national average of what other states provide, we can save over a billion dollars a year. And I think that that's something that we need to do. Okay, thank you. Second question is about concealed carry legislation. I believe a uh, measure passed out of the House Ag Committee this week, if I'm not mistaken. Do you support holding universities liable if concealed carry passes and universities do not allow concealed carry on campus? Senator Johnson. Well, I think that concealed carry is probably the number two issue that I get asked about every, every place that I go. Budget's number one and concealed carry's number two. I'm supportive of concealed carry. I actually um, filed a bill this year so that our citizens have the ability, like the citizens in the other 49 states, to carry weapons. As far as universities go, I know that that's part of the discussion and the conversation that's going to be, and the negotiations that are going to go on as the concealed carry bill moves through the, um, through the General Assembly. And, uh, and I think that our universities will need to come to the table and, and talk to the other parties involved, and we need to, to have a conversation about what their um, responsibilities will be on campus. Okay, thank you. Senator Severson. Um, I would um, agree with uh, most of those comments. Uh, I support um, uh, the right for concealed carry. Obviously, it's something that has uh, worked in uh, 49 other states. Uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we've got the ability to look at what has worked in other states and implement uh, those uh, same measures. Uh, much of the concerns that have been raised uh, by individuals are concerns that have never been uh, borne out in other uh, states. And so we feel comfortable that's the right thing to do. As a, uh, in regards to the litigious issue uh, in Illinois, uh, that is something that clearly when the legislation is, is passed uh, will be addressed. And uh, universities uh, as uh, municipalities uh, and uh, churches uh, and schools will all be part of uh, the conversation. Uh, but again, I think people should feel comfortable that what Illinois is going to do is something that uh, has a track record of being done in other states, and they should feel comfortable that the decision that's ultimately made is one that's going to be the best for the citizens of Illinois. Okay. Thank you. Third question is about pensions. What can be done about the unfunded pension liabilities in our state? Senator Severson. The pension problem is um, uh, growing at an uh, unsustainable uh, rate. Uh, it is caused by a uh, combination of years of 
of the state not fulfilling its obligation, uh, as well as uh, actuarial changes and uh, uh, investments that have been uh, reduced as well. Uh, the issue now is not looking backwards and pointing fingers. The issue is uh, that we are facing a, a debt that is uh, not uh, sustainable and there has to be a solution. Uh, the solution is not going to be found with one side or the other trying to bully their way in. Uh, we have individuals that have uh, a, a right to pensions that have been promised, uh, that have either retired or uh, are near retirement, that have uh, counted on that, and uh, we need to make sure that it's there. Uh, the solution is going to ultimately entail uh, a combination of the state fulfilling its obligation, uh, increased uh, contributions, uh, and um, uh, dealing with how we work with new employees. Uh, and it's difficult to try to answer a pension problem in one minute. Uh, so, uh, so don't complain if someone says you're just giving a sound bite answer. Thank you, Senator Severson. Senator Johnson. Well, well the senator has said that many of the things that we've already known, that this pension system is unsustainable. We have $85 billion in debt. And um, obviously, something has to be done. There's no doubt about that. Uh, reform has got to happen. Um, you know, certainly I think that uh, the solution is that we need to bring all the parties that are involved to the table. I think the employees need to be there, the, um, the General Assembly, the Governor's Office, and uh, all the folks that are involved in the pension system problem. Um, we need to make sure that people are treated fairly, that people have, have um, contributed to the pension system over the years and certainly they are looking toward that pension and depending on it. We also mean to make sure that any changes we make are constitutional so that we do not end up in, a, in any type of protracted lawsuit. And then we need to make sure that they're affordable so that we can actually um, get ourselves out of this pension mess. Okay, thank you. On to closing statements, Senator Johnson. You know, Illinois has many challenges. I don't think I need to tell you that. But we have many assets as well. We have beautiful natural resources. We have a stable transportation infrastructure. We have fine educational institutions. We have strong industries. And we have a well-educated workforce. And we have citizens like you that are engaged in this political process and want to see our state turn around. You know, many people talk to me, we hear talk about this sandwich is awesome or this shirt is awesome. But, you know, when I walk into the Capitol every day and I walk through the rotunda and I walk, tread on the steps where a lot of our, our, our past leaders have tread, I look up and I think to myself, I work here and this is really awesome. And that is why I believe that if you send principal leaders to Springfield, we can restore our state to one that we can all be proud of again. I want to be one of those leaders, and I would appreciate your vote on March 20th. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Johnson. Senator Severson. Thank you. Well, as we've been talking about, Illinois is facing uh, significant problems. Uh, the solutions to those problems are not going to be found uh, in uh, politics. It's going to be found in uh, sitting down together uh, with uh, both parties uh, and reaching those solutions uh, that have to be made. Uh, this is a time when we need to put those differences aside and work together to say how are we going to uh, fix problems that are as large as they are. Uh, that can be done, uh, but that means uh, being willing to take the risk, uh, to take the tough votes uh, and pay the price for taking the tough votes, uh, but uh, doing what you know is the right thing to do if we want to make uh, Illinois strong uh, and vibrant like it once was. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that I've been endorsed by both business groups, uh, Chamber and NFIB and the manufacturers, as well as labor groups. And I've been endorsed by taxpayer groups as well as retired teachers. I think that shows us that together, that uh, all of us uh, working together to deal with these issues, we can come up with a solution that's actually uh, passable and workable here in Illinois. So thank you for allowing us uh, the opportunity to be here tonight. All right. Thank you, Senator Severson. Senator Severson, Senator Johnson, thank you for joining us this You're evening. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you.